Hey everybody, my name is Marcus Pierre. I'm an ex-member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. And this is probably going to be one of the most controversial videos I've done to date. Um, I may even lose some friends, but I have to obey what the Lord tells me to do. But before I start this video, I want to begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I ask that you speak through my voice, think through my mind, let your word penetrate the hearts of your people. Lord, send it to them in a way that they can receive. In Jesus' name, amen. So this journey for me started last year. Um, started in August, really July of 2021. But before then, I always heard various people say, oh, being in a Greek organization is demonic. You know, secret societies, you know, that's, that's, that's not of God. Now, me personally, I always thought they were jealous because they couldn't get into those organizations. I said, oh, you're just hating. That's, you know, whatever. They, they were never able to tell me how it was not of God or how it was demonic. Now, last July, uh, a street evangelist asked me, we, we were friends, and he asked me, Marcus, are you in a secret society? I said, no, I'm in a fraternity, though, uh, Phi Beta Sigma. And he said, well, actually, uh, fraternities are secret societies. And by the way, your fraternity is dedicated to a false god. I said, false god? What? So I researched it. I didn't take his word for it. I researched it. I went online. I went to go to YouTube. And I, I YouTubed um, false gods and fraternities or something like that. And I saw all these denouncement videos of people who were in Black Greek letter organizations who were denouncing, renouncing their letters. I was like, whoa, this is a, this is a thing. And I started researching of, with Phi Beta Sigma. And the false god with that one is Pallas Athena. Now, finding this out, I was completely like floored. I was like, I was in cahoots. I was in covenant with a false god. I, they didn't tell me that when I pledged. I'm like, Lord, why didn't I know? Now, a little background on when I pledged. I pledged uh, in the fall of 2000. Um, so that was a long time ago. And um, up until that, till last year, I was in the fraternity for about 21 years. And so I wasn't active for a lot of years, but, you know, I still consider myself a member, you know. And so I was re researching everything with, with the false god associated with Phi Beta Sigma. And one particular uh, thing I saw online, now mind you, uh, just about every organization's rituals are online, on Google, uh, fair use. Uh, there was a part in the ritual, the subsection is called Inferno, Observing the Wonders of the Mountain. Now, regardless of anyone has said this, or if they remember doing this while they pledge, it doesn't matter. It's, it's in the organization's history. It's part of their, their path or their way. And another disclaimer, I want to say this. People in these organizations are not evil. The spirit behind these organizations, that's what's evil. Okay? I'm going to read a section of this. Now, each candidate is led to the top of an inclined plane three times. Plank of wood upon chair or otherwise. Each time, the candidate is lifted down and carried around the room. And then back up the plank, making it appear that he is climbing. One must be careful not to do any bodily harm. Do this about five times. Stop at the top and the Chief Justice, Chief Justice shall state, now you are about to review the wonders of the mountain. Deputy, speaking, fellow Greek, with your mind's eye, you are privileged to observe the wonder of Mount Olympus, where Ares, the Greek god of war, resided. The Titan, Prometheus, stole fire from heaven and taught men its use. For which act? Zeus punished him by chaining him to the very rock on which you stand. But Sigma has outlawed, outlawed the warring Greeks and is now under the protection of, listen to this, Pallas Athena, the goddess of wisdom, arts, and industries. Are you willing to give your time, energy, thought, and service 
to Phi Beta Sigma? What is your answer? And the candidate then answers yes or no or whatnot. Each candidate is then unblindfolded. When the candidate views Phi Beta Sigma in bright letters, either reflected through a lighted book or on a banner or on other lighted fraternity paraphernalia, the blindfold is then replaced. Did you all hear that? Let that set in for a second. Did you hear that? Now, whether or not you remember saying that, it's part of the organization. Now, the Bible is clear. Isaiah 42, 8. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved idols. Now, essentially, what I just read you, an excerpt from the ritual, is pretty much saying Sigma is a light. It's elevating Sigma to a level of deity. And we know that there is, for believers of Christ, there is but one deity, and that's Yah, Yeshua, Jesus. So when I read this, I saw this, I was floored. I was like, oh my God, like I did not know. No one told me this. And really, I think those who pledged us, they didn't know either. A lot of us, when we pledged undergrad, we were in our late teens or very early 20s and we wanted to finish the process. Finishing the process was what was important to us. It was a source of completion and pride. Dropping line, while, dropping line when you're pledging was seen as something that you, you need to be ashamed of. Like, you know, that's like one of the worst things you could do in, re, in regards to Greek life. But when I found this out about Pallas Athena coming under the protection of a false god last year, I said, Lord, first thing I said, I like, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry that I didn't know. And God is so good because he, he covers us in our ignorance a lot of times. If we generally don't know something, God will cover us and protect us. However, he loves and cares for us so much that he's going to find a way to get us that information and be like, hey, you're still wrong. This is not of me. Okay. Now, in regards to rituals and stuff for each organization being online, there's another verse I want to read you. This is Luke 12, verses 2 through 3. Jesus speaking. But there is nothing so carefully concealed that it will not be revealed, nor so hidden that it will not be made known. For that reason, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be proclaimed from on the housetops. God is in this season, he's always has been, but especially in this season of exposing that which is not of him, especially when his children are involved. And again, people still in these organizations, yes, your children, you're still children of God. However, your allegiance is divided because the night that you crossed, an oath was taken. Allegiance was sworn to whatever organization you're in. In my case, it was Phi Beta Sigma, but in reality, it's really to Pallas Athena, a false god. And of course, we know false gods aren't real, so what is that? It's a demonic spirit. It's a demon. Now, of course, when I heard this, I repented of it because I was like, you know what, God? This was cool, being, you know, being a Sigma and, and the connections and the networking, everything was cool with that. But, you know, your word says that you're the only... God I'm supposed to serve. And also, I want to read another verse too. Exodus 23, when the Lord gave the Ten Commandments to Moses. The second one, well, the first one was, you shall have no other gods before me. Now, I know some of you are probably saying, well, I don't put my organization before God. It's God first, then the organization or family or whatever hierarchy you have. But the original Hebrew for the word before means in my presence. God is saying, you shall not have any other gods in my presence. Not so much ahead of him, but in his presence. God is a jealous God. He wants no, he, he, he has no rivals. He doesn't want to compete for anything. So us being in these organizations, we're having other gods before him, whether we realize it or not. Okay. Another verse I'm going to read to you. Leviticus 26, 1. 
You shall not make idols for yourselves, nor shall you erect an image, a sacred pillar, or an obelisk. Nor shall you place any figured stone in your land so that you may bow down to it, for I am the Lord your God. How many times did we have to bow down when we were in our pledge process, or even the night we crossed, or taking pictures or looking up, hand signs being thrown up, and, and eyes looking up? What do we look, why are our eyes lifted towards the heavens? Ephesians 6.10 says there are principalities in the heavenly spheres. Demonic entities live in the heavenly realm, in the skies above. But when some of these organizations, when we're throwing up hand signs, we're looking up. Why? Why is that? We weren't told why, but just to look up. This is a spiritual thing. Its roots are spiritual, whether we believe it or not. 2 Peter 3, 10 through 12. And it shows the temporary nature to a lot of things we, we love on this earth. It says, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. And then the heavens will vanish with a mighty and thunderous roar. And the material elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and the works that are on it will be burned up. In the day of eternity, when we're with the Lord, there aren't going to be any letters, any organizations, none of that. It's all going to be one in Christ. So why are we doing it now? And some might not like this, but, you know, those organizations, they're a form of idolatry. Those letters are worshipped, whether we say we don't worship them or not. We wear them across our chest, close to our heart. We wear lavaliers around our necks. We wear bracelets. We wear other paraphernalia. We have paddles with carved letters. We, the uh, previous verse says something about carved images. These are things that go over our heads because, you know, we're in the moment. We have friends in these organizations. We're our line brothers, line sisters, or brothers and sisters. But there's one brotherhood and sisterhood that's eternal, and that's the brotherhood and sisterhood of Christ. These organizations are not eternal. Now, of course, uh, I'm sure a lot of us has, have heard that, oh, these organizations are Christian organizations. Well, that's not necessarily true. In some of the rituals for some of the organizations, scripture is inverted to suit that of the organization. Satan is very slick and, and, and smooth with deception. He takes a little bit of truth and he twists it. He takes half-truths. He's the father of lies. I want to read to you a word that the Lord gave me yesterday morning, as a matter of fact. He said this, Time is short, and I'm calling those who name me as their God and Savior out of that which displeases me. You may not think being in your organization is a big deal. It's not a big deal because you go to church and praise me. Well, to me, it is a big deal because when you join these organizations, you got into covenant with the false God of these organizations. The day you crossed those burning sands. Yes, the oath you swore was a spiritual covenant. Now, some who are seeing this, you're probably very upset, you're angry. But think about why you're angry. Why are you angry at hearing this? And also, I want to ask you a, a rhetorical question. If they told you back then when you were pledging that this was a false god, and each organization has uh, false gods for Alpha Phi Alpha, it's the Sphinx, for Alpha Kappa Alpha, Atlas, for... Kappa Alpha Psi, it's Apollo, Omega Psi Phi, Minerva, Delta Sigma Theta, Minerva, Zeta Phi Beta, Bastet, uh, Sigma Gamma Rho, Aurora, Iota Phi Theta is Centaur. I believe that's, that's all of them. Um, if they told you that each organization, this was the God that we serve, would you still do it? For those of you who've done a grad chapter, if they told you this, would you still do it? Or is the, the lure of being connected for networking purposes, or even generally wanting friends or having someone to call a sister or a brother, is that still worth it? Is that still worth splitting your allegiance from the one true God?
I really want you to think about that. And don't take my word for it. I want you to research it. Research it for yourself. Seek God for yourself. Ask God, Lord, is this of you? Now, I know there are a lot of pastors who are in these organizations. Guess what? Pastors can miss it too. Pastors are not God. You don't, when you pray, you don't pray to pastors. You pray to God. Seek God for yourself. Ask him what he thinks about it. And there's a verse, uh, another verse I want to read to you. And here's the thing. Scripture is so important because the word of God is infallible. Uh, the Bible does not contradict itself. Okay? God means what he says. Matthew 7, 21. Jesus speaking, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day when I judge them, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and driven out demons in your name and done many miracles in your name? And then I will declare to them publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me. You are banished from my presence, you who act wickedly, disregarding my commands. It doesn't matter. If you're a pastor who's in a Greek organization and you're seeing this, it doesn't matter how powerful your ministry is. Signs and wonders could follow. That is fine. But that doesn't necessarily mean that God is still pleased with everything we do. All of us. Daily we have to seek God and repent. And just because, you know, God may be blessing you, everything's going good, that does not mean that God approves of everything, especially these organizations. And if you find yourself resisting it, resisting this, you have to check inside your heart. Examine your heart. You know, the Lord also said to me, he said, the long, as long as you're in these organizations for that amount of time, I was in it for half my life. I was 19 when I crossed. I was in it for 21 years. The longer something is in you, the harder it is to, to get rid of it. Kind of like a bad habit that's been going on for decades and it's still there. It's hard to kick a bad habit that's been there for so long. But it's possible. It's possible to, to walk away from that when you really seek the Lord about it. God loves you. He loves you enough to, he loves you enough to cover you from something you didn't know, but now he's putting it out there for you to see. It's up to you if you want to heed what he's telling you, if he, you know, him uh, convicting your heart, like this is not of me. I pray you make the right decision. For those uh, who are part of my for former organization, Phi Beta Sigma, I still love you. I love you all with the love of Christ still. We're still cool. I don't hate anyone. Uh, I have family, friends you know, in these organizations. I still love them. I'm going to let you know, like, hey, this isn't of God. Just like someone told me this isn't of God, and I, and I heeded it. All right? The brotherhood that I'm concerned about and the sisterhood I'm concerned about is that of Christ. That's the only, that's the only one that, that lasts forever. So I'd like to close with a verse. It's Luke 11.35. Jesus speaking, Make sure that the light you think you have is not actually darkness. So that's pretty profound and powerful right there. He says, make sure that the light you think you have is not darkness. How many of our organizations in those organizations in some point said they are the light of the world or you see the letters and lights? Jesus said, make sure that the light you think you have is not actually darkness. Remember, don't, don't focus on the outward of these organizations. And another thing too, community service. A lot of these organizations do community service, but who gets the glory for them? The organization, right? Not God. Doesn't the Bible tell us to, you know, what, whatever we do and say do to the glory of God? God is not being glorified in, in these community service projects. The organization is being glorified. Rather, that false God is being glorified. So just remember that. And I challenge you. As you remember, as you study for yourself, study for yourself, seek God. Let him be your guide, not anyone else, but let him, let his word be your guide. God bless you. I love you. Have a good day.